Hi, I'm no one in particular, I'm just a meerkat, but today, I'm Meerkura Ultra, because I love K-pop and Sakura of La Seraphim. Oh, I love them, I love K-pop in general, I like the songs, I like the dancing, especially the dancing, all oh, the routines, especially the routines, I like watching the white fixed camera to see them all in full, K-pop is just Wonderful to me, and La Seraphim was a total accidental gateway beyond Blackpink. Lisa be my goddess always. Oh, hi, Lisa. Because I knew about Sakura for reasons I'm going to bring up in a bit. But I was strolling through a Target and saw La Seraphim's album there and was like, that sounds like a child trying to spell Seraphim. You know, like the biblically accurate angels. So I checked it on Spotify and I loved it. Instant buy. And lo and behold, it has Sakura as a member, and I went wild. It was all about their aesthetics and their dancing for me. The way Kazuha does this whole leg thing here. Or this dope ass dance bit for E, Psyche, and Bluebeard. Or the variations of many of their dances made anew. Either with backup dances or just a variation of their current songs. Each performance feels special. While also being able to do some stupid yet addicting dances. Like, what the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> or Perfect Night and it's earworm catchy chorus with this silly absurd dance that I just love. Oh, <laughs> like look at this brief leg dance here. <laughs> it's just, it's so, they mix in the silly with the serious and I just love it, you know? And then watching their silly YouTube channel put these cute creatures into a house and make them play games for content and gain and know them better. Kazuha and her face just makes me laugh. <laughs> I don't know, she just makes me laugh. But this former ballerina has some great moves and even shoots a bow like the leader Shaywan and her adorableness like or Eugene's gorgeous self her perfect English because it's an English phrase <laughs> her phenomenal memory and this dance here like The very weird Unche just dying like. But Sakura is my K pop bias, if you will, because beyond just being oh, perfect, she just effortlessly fills her role like a true professional. But also, it's just so fucking funny. Like, she's so effortlessly hilarious. She's constantly making me giggle. And they knew this, so they gave her her own show. Fearless Kura. Wah, fearless. Where they forced Sakura to do things like work a normal job because it's adorable. Oh, look how she's like us. Oh, just ignore capitalism. Ignore all that. Look, look, look at her. She's just like us. But Sakura has done more than just be a K-pop idol. La Seraphim is her third successful idol group. Previously a part of the massive AKB48 and followed by Eyes One and finally joining La Seraphim, overcoming having numbers in her group name. She was born to do this and wanted to be I in the entertainment business Mickey since Mouse. she saw Mickey Mouse as a child. But even amongst idol groups, she is special for her notoriety. In side quest, oh, she's not just the master of being fearless or the master of making kimchi, but the master of animals as well, like to um get <laughs> oh, this move here. Wow, wow. But she is also a master of video games, master of launching shoes. She's also the god of winking. So good. But also the master of blinks like. <laughs> She's actually the president of Blackpink, like. And she's a hater of people and master of language. Just one. <laughs> Just, Just one. one. But she also ventured on a quest only hardcore fans seemingly know about. And it's actually where I first heard about her. That time, Sakura Miyawaki became a Joshi wrestler. Who's ready for story time with Meerkat? Meerkat. 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 Don't bite me. Don't bite me. Don't bite me. Oh. 
Back in 2017, all the 48 groups joined together to form the cast for an AKB48 Japanese drama called Tofu Pro Wrestling, a simple drama starring Sakura and Matsui Jirina. Sakura's father owns a tofu shop and used to train wrestlers. He died and leaves the tofu. <laughs> He died and leaves the tofu shop to Sakura, who later decides to carry on her father's legacy. And it's basically the Mighty Ducks with a ragtag group of losers who fight the big corporate wrestling led by an evil dude with their main star, Hollywood Jirina. The series shifts halfway with the tofu gang joining the organization, and it becomes about the stories of the characters, their arc to crown a champion, and the rivalry of Jirina and Sakura's characters. It's a fun, cute show that's easy to understand as I watched it in French subtitles for quite a long time and it's about wrestling so of course it's a must watch with the filmmaking so easily designed that really anybody can watch and understand just because it's just so obvious there's nothing subtle about it but the fun part is that they launched an actual wrestling show the real WIP Climax a live event held in Cork and Hall where the idols participated in a pro wrestling show they would hold this event twice with the following year including Asha Kong and even featuring future TJ BW International Princess Champion Yuki Arai as Bubbly Arai. But the 2017 WIP cast practiced hard and even went to see Okada versus Omega and they'd be like... <laughs> 2017 World Idol Pro Wrestling Main Event was a tag team match for the WIP Tag Team Titles featuring Hollywood Jirina, who honestly looks the part, and Sexy Shiroma, whose whole thing was just being sexy, versus Long Speech Yokoyama, aka Yui Yokoyama, whose character plays the older adult of the group and has a tendency to talk her ass off during promos, even cutting the promo so long that the show cut to a whole other story before coming back to her still talking, oh she won't shut up, and her tag team partner. Sakura playing her character Cherry Miyawaki and look at her serious face she's so serious and they fight no they sing an opening song first <laughs> The show was basically a musical. Now, the whole point of covering this and the thing I found remarkable is that the match itself was mm, passable. It just seemed like train school students putting on a match and it happened to be in Cork and Hall. It was basic with some fun stuff and some awkwardness, but that was it. Sakura was basically taught to do a forearm like her show character and just ripped on that. <laughs> oh, look at her go! Look at her go! Meanwhile, Shiroma was just being sexy a lot, like her direction was just do sexy poses and like whatever. And Hollywood Jirina truly fits this role and really does look like she's already a Joshi if not for the awkward moves and the fact that none of them can really run the ropes. There was even those early high speed spots you see in matches between the two that I've seen worse of. You got to see Sakura in there take a cold breaker and she watched enough New Japan to know how to power up and hit a sliding elbow. We also got to see her take a rainmaker and a fisherman's buster. But it was Long Speech Yokoyama who stole the show. See? What I found remarkable is how good their facial expressions were. I always say, pro wrestlers are the best actors in the world, but the most important things for me are not the moves, but the stuff in between the moves. After a week passes, I'm not going to remember any of these spots, but I will remember Sakura's face here, and more importantly, I will remember Yui Yokoyama, whose expressions were just on point all the way through. Every moment she could emote, she takes it, taking submissions with her arm getting teared off, or getting her ass kicked by sexy ass attacks, or taking a big Texas clover leaf, and even hitting a pretty decent super kick on Jirina. I'm honestly impressed by Yokoyama for what is essentially just another acting job, but with stunts. When Jirina kicks out, Yokoyama wears the disappointed face, but her lion spirit has her continue. She would scream out in passion, but she lifts up Jirina and hits a surprising Misawa Emerald Flosion. Jeez! Jirina would kick out just a little too early, but I take it back. I will remember that a Japanese idol from AKB48 did an Emerald Flosion. Sexy Shiroma would hit the fisherman's suplex on Sakura, but Master Kura is the master of the no cell and elbows her down. And here's Yokoyama's face as she rises to meet Jirina in the final moments of battle. Super kick blocked, lariat down, and then the big taunt to let everyone know before hitting the most random fucking move Jirina could do. A goddamn destino! She barely hit it too. That seemed like it was all Yokoyama keeping the move alive. 
Juina and Shiroma would get the victory and the vacant tag team titles from Yuji Nagata. Sakura and her ragtag gang would lay in defeat and Yokoyama looking the saddest of them all. Now, AKB48 and all the 48 groups are immensely popular in Japan. I have no idea if this was like a cultural hit or not, but they filled Cork and Hall and they made noise for them. Again, the match was what you get from wrestling school students, but also, again, these are idols essentially fulfilling an acting role with their own stunts. They were trained and worked very hard to choreograph these matches and provide entertainment. If anything, it was too long, and it does prove that you do need good wrestlers, but that, that's obvious. But wrestlers with fluidity and flow and less awkwardness. But if these girls couldn't act, this match would have been way more of a mess. No, these girls performed everything but the moves in a beautiful way. But even Yokoyama hit a pretty good emerald flosion. Like, look. Look at Sakura cry post-match and then hand it off to her friend Long Speech who really just has this face for this type of stuff, the watery eyes, the disappointment in her voice. Pro wrestling is often about the agony of defeat leading into the catharsis of victory. Years later, WIP 2018 Climax, Long Speech Okayama teamed with Aja Kong playing an American named Gregory versus the chaotic, violent heel group of the show. And Oz are trying to kill idols and slap them around and smash them with chairs and even pile drives Matsumura. But Aja, I mean, I mean Gregory from America, taking far more offense than I expected, and Yokoyama looking more confident after a year, taking on Voice Yamada, whose whole thing is she screams like, Come out there. Boys. And she overcomes her offense and even a seatbelt pin attempt and returns fire with a super kick. And then learned from last year and fires off a passionate scream to the crowd for landing an emerald flosion for the victory. A victory Yokoyama earned after the agony of defeat. And look at how Voice Yamada sells the loss. Idols in wrestling are nothing new. TJPW has the Up Up Girls and they have Yuki Arai and ones with idol pass like Maki Ito and Wakana. But it's because they are the biggest idol group in Japan and because their expressions and emotions were surprisingly well done. It's what merits this video. In ring work whatever, this was novelty and a performance art that I love. This was their last show for obvious reasons. It can't keep up with the demand of wrestling, but for the one-off shows these were, it was fun and reminded me what I loved about wrestling and the fact that Sakura, now as successful as ever in the Seraphim, debuting their new EP that I definitely have already, did a side quest to become a Joshi. It's such a funny thing to me. It's such a meme. It's how I first learned about her and returning full circle back is rewarding to Sakura with a one match in wrestling. Just one. Let's go. Let's go. Just one. 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 Justin Stein, Matthew Pilichuska, Neo Zefu, Terrence Danwick, Kev Mullen, Adam K, Ray Kanashige, Party Money 520, Bunkwix Videos, Jugger the Graphics, Shut Up Bingo, Dot Wave, Aaron Zacharias, 45222, I want victims, Justice League of America, Julia Sunglasses, She Wall, Paul Darn, Pickle Slammer, Scott Racer, Steven Stevens, Covertory D, Smoon, Lil Choot Choot, Tony Davis, Jesse, The Outlaw, and Dodge Morningstar. Thank you all very much.